I've been using Adobe Flash and Adobe Animate for almost 10 years now. And I've made stuff like this, and this, and even, uh, this. So basically, I think I'm qualified to go over the basics of Adobe Animate, so you can begin making your own animations. Part 1. Setup. The first thing you'll see when you open Adobe Animate is a place to create a file. Create a 640 by 360 canvas, and then you'll be brought to your stage. This is where all the action happens, and what your main file will look like when it's exported. Adobe Animate has many tools you can use to create graphics, pens and brushes for shapes, and fills and strokes for the inside and outside. So, if I wanted to make a square, I'd simply choose two colors, and then use the rectangle tool. I can create a square by holding down the shift key and my left mouse button and dragging it. Once you've made a fun shape, you can create a symbol, which puts everything inside its own graphic. This graphic can be moved around on the stage in any way you'd like. If you didn't make it a symbol, you wouldn't be able to move it around correctly. See? Ugh. Part 2. Movement. Once the object's in a symbol, you can place one keyframe here and another keyframe there. These keyframes can be placed either by right-clicking and selecting Insert Keyframe or pressing F6 on the keyboard. These are exactly what they're called. They're the keyframes of the animation. Once you place these keyframes, you can move the object around. The first keyframe is the starting point and the second keyframe is the end point. You can insert a tween by right-clicking and selecting Create Classic Tween or you can create a keyboard shortcut like I have. Mine is F9, so I press F9 to create a tween that bridges together these two keyframes. A tween creates the in-betweens. But this is pretty basic, it's not really a smooth movement, so how do I make it smooth? That's where ease comes in. Eases create smoother movements that are more natural. For example, if I wanted this square to fall, I can't simply have it fall at the same rate. As it falls, I'd apply an ease in. This literally makes the square ease in to the movement, so it starts slow and then gets faster as it impacts the ground. When the square bounces back up, it would ease out, so it starts fast and ends slow as it loses energy and reaches the top of its bounce. But what if you want the square to do other things, like spin as it bounces, or move left and right? This is where nesting comes in, which allows several movements to happen concurrently but not affecting each other's movements. Part 3. Nesting. If I were to move this square horizontally inside the symbol where it's bouncing up and down, it wouldn't look right. It's not arcing like it would in real life. Instead, we have to create more symbols. So, we'd start by taking our square, which is already a graphic, and converting it to a graphic again. This will be the vertical up and down movement. Now let's go inside here. We would then create another graphic. This graphic would be our rotation. We would start here by making a keyframe at the beginning, and then where I think the end of the animation would be, around frame 32. Next, I would click on the tween, click rotation, and then choose clockwise. This animation does not need any ease, as rotations typically don't ease. Let's leave this symbol and go to the vertical movement. Here, the block would move up and down several times. As it goes up, it eases out, and as it goes down, it eases in. Finally, the outer layer, which is on the stage itself. This is where we'll let the square move horizontally. This horizontal movement needs no ease. It'll simply move across the stage at the same rate. Let's add a little bounce at the end, just to show the impact of its final fall, and boom! This is what the finished product looks like. And to visualize this more effectively, here's what each graphic looks like on its own. Isn't it so cool how they act in tandem? Part 4. Useful Tools This section is a lot more specific, but it will help you, and I often see it lacking in tutorials. Let's say we go into the vertical up and down graphic, and we change where all the keyframes are. Now when we play the animation, the vertical movements aren't synced up with the rotation. That's because the frame of the graphic has stayed the same while the location of the keyframes have changed. To fix this, we would select the first frame, which is on frame 1, and then the rest of the frames. We would then right-click, and then click Synchronize Symbol. This makes all of the symbols match up with the first frame, meaning that now a keyframe on frame 23 is on frame 23. Now, what if I really wanted to move every square on every keyframe a little bit to the right? Should I simply just drag every square and hope they line up? No. Instead, click Edit Multiple Frames. Once you do this, you can expand this little section so it covers the entire section, and now every single keyframe is on the stage at the same time. You can select all of these squares, move them slightly to the right, and boom! Now every square is where you wanted it. Finally, what if I want my square to be at the exact center of the screen? We would go to the stage, and then click the Align section. There are a bunch of different alignment options, and for this one we would choose the center horizontally and the center vertically, and boom! We're at the center of the stage. 
Overall, there are a ton more cool tools in Adobe Animate, and even more fun ways to create animation. If you want to learn these techniques, comment down below, and I'll make another video. Thank you for watching!